Over 800 million people use the Internet in China. But things look a lot different there than elsewhere. Facebook and Google are blocked, for example. What's the Internet like behind the Chinese firewall? Our topic today on SHIFT. Most of the world uses products from Google, Apple, Facebook and Amazon or GAFA. But not China. Their three homegrown tech giants dominate the industry. They're called Baidu, Alibaba and Tencent, also known as BAT. In China, Baidu replaces Google, Alibaba is for e-commerce and Tencent is more popular than Facebook is here. But that's not all. Baidu's map service instead of Google Maps, Weibo instead of Twitter, and WeChat instead of WhatsApp. In China, there are separate providers for almost every online service available in the West. But they're far more than just copies. In many fields like live streaming and online payment, Chinese providers have become global leaders. Daniela Stockmann is a professor at the Hattie School of Governance in Berlin and an expert on China's digital trends. She says users play a big role in these developments. One main difference between Chinese users and European users is that Chinese internet users are fast adopters. So when there is a new platform, they will immediately go and try it out. WeChat alone has more than 1 billion users a month. WeChat Pay is the leading mobile payment service. It works in supermarkets and at restaurants. Hardly anyone uses cash in China anymore. Users can even book doctor appointments. WeChat is like a super app. Without it, getting around in China isn't easy. Social media platforms like WeChat, for example, emphasize less the distribution of information, but more social networking. So WeChat was invented as a means to develop what's called in China guanxi, uh, social connections. Video streaming services are especially popular in China. Instead of YouTube and Netflix, Tencent Video, Aikiyi and Yoku are popular. Platforms for short videos that last around 15 seconds are flooded with 800 million visitors each month. The current market leader is ByteDance with the program Douyin. Outside of China, we know it as TikTok. Another innovation to video streaming is on the platform Bilibili. User comments are displayed live as the video plays. Things are trending more and more towards live streaming. The market leader Yinke counts 25 million active users every month. And the company takes user supervision very seriously. With the help of AI, more than 1,000 human content managers monitor streams for violations. They look for pornography, depictions of violence and calls to violence. But smoking on screen or showing large tattoos could also get your account blocked. The Chinese state has started much earlier than US-based and European platforms to develop a vast institutional infrastructure in order to control and censor content. In the West, this is called content moderation. In China, they call it uh, content management. But China doesn't stop at moderating content. It's created an enormous firewall to shield its users from the rest of the digital world. This comes in handy for many Chinese platforms because it eliminates foreign competition. But it also makes it easier to silence uncomfortable opinions. How does it all work? It is basically a huge, vast uh, Ethernet connection that is connected via very few servers to the global internet. And because all traffic has to go through these servers, the Chinese government is able to block certain content. In China, foreign websites are mostly inaccessible. When the content is seen as not conforming to Chinese government regulations, their IP addresses are simply blocked. That applies to Google, the most used search engine in the world, as well as the user-administered online encyclopedia Wikipedia, and even Deutsche Welle's website. 
Chinese online services are usually censored before they even reach the public. Xiao Chang is familiar with this phenomenon. He's a human rights activist and editor-in-chief of the China Digital Times. The advantage of those Chinese domestic companies are uh, they promise the government they have a capacity to censor and control online contents. That so they will not, they will listen to the government and they will actually preemptively deleting a lot of the contents before uh, the internet police even take a look. The messaging app WeChat can use algorithms to prevent the transfer of photos in real time. Canada's University of Toronto Citizen Lab found this out. The image of an empty chair commemorating a dead human rights activist simply doesn't go through to chat partners in China. So if I upload a picture to share with a friend, it's immediately compared to a database. If it raises concern there, the picture is simply not sent. The whole process is completely automated with image recognition software. While it's technically fascinating, the socio-political consequences are terrifying. Xiao Qiang says online censorship has massively increased under General Secretary Xi Jinping. Now the Chinese internet is much more a politically quiet place. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's still commercially very uh, uh, vibrant, uh, culturally uh, uh, still full of activities uh, and innovations, but on the, it lost its political edge. Intense surveillance has all but politically silenced China's internet. But the government is not satisfied with just blocking and filtering out unwanted opinions. It also keeps looking for new ways to use technology to its advantage. The Communist Party of China has its own app, and it's been especially successful. Digital politics. The Communist Party of China keeps citizens in line with a little red app. In the beginning of 2019, Xi Jiangu, which means as much as study to make the nation strong, was the most downloaded app in China, even more than WeChat and Douyin. The propaganda tool spreads the views of the General Secretary of the Communist Party, Xi Jinping. Users must register with a telephone number and their real names in order to study political articles, to comment or to solve little puzzles. They rewarded coupons and prizes, just like in mobile games. Hong Kong activist Joshua Wong is critical of the way millions of Chinese people are directly manipulated in this way. He says the voluntary civic education platform is a surveillance tool. This app just implies the rise of digital authoritarianism in China. And it shows how the communist regime will use their digital and mobile application to promote its propaganda and ideology. The Uyghurs are a Muslim minority in northwest China. They are being monitored very closely. The Xinjiang region is like a testing ground for total state surveillance. Police officers can log into what's called the Integrated Joint Operation Platform. The program collects extensive personal data and flags individuals who appear potentially dangerous. The organization Human Rights Watch analyzed the program. On its surface, most of this information looks like standard fare for police. But as we dig deeper into the app, we can see that ordinary routine legal behavior is being treated by authorities as suspect. The data gathered in citizens is shockingly comprehensive. It includes information ranging from religious affiliations and driver's licenses to employment records. It even gathers data on residential energy consumption. Movement patterns are filmed by the ever-present surveillance cameras. If something appears out of the ordinary, consequences can be devastating. For example, it's helped single out and detain approximately one million people from the Uyghur minority. Recent studies show that the state is not only monitoring residents, but also foreigners who enter the country by land. At the border, police install an app on their smartphones that scans contacts, images, videos and voice messages for certain keywords. There are 73,000 terms deemed suspicious. Even the picture of a mosque could raise eyebrows. In other Chinese regions, surveillance is not as massive. Here, the internet can also pose a great opportunity. Dissent is possible, in theory, as long as you stick to certain rules. One way to start online discussions and spread news is Weibo. It's similar to Twitter and is China's largest microblogging platform. 
when they use Weibo, they're using it as a means to uh, come out with new stories that then often are picked up and go viral and they're picked up by market-based media and then funneled into the center of public discourse. One example is a discussion over working hours that the founders of the startup Dimension have kicked off. They developed encryption software, but on the side, they engage in the fight against the heavy workloads in the tech industry. The so-called 996 phenomenon, working from 9 in the morning till 9 in the evening, six days a week, is a violation of Chinese labor laws. They also speak with successful businessmen, like Alibaba founder Jack Ma, who compares work to love. Despite all this, it's very important to them to not be perceived as political activists. Here's what they had to say in an interview. The first question he asked me is, are you a leftist? I, I said, like, I replied, just, like, what is a leftist? <laughs> because I, 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 I know nothing about that. Despite various barriers, online political debate is possible in China, to a certain extent. Chinese internet users are incredibly politically active and they can criticize policies. Specific leaders becomes more sensitive because as soon as you mention a specific person by name, topics become more sensitive. And if you organize collective action, chances are that your information, your messages will be removed. When we look at the internet behind China's firewall, we get a glimpse into the future. There's live streaming and mobile payment, but there's also far-reaching surveillance and heavy state control. Users and platforms alike are quick to censor themselves to avoid sanctions. This makes a free and open democratic discussion practically impossible. Behind China's firewall, the internet culture and economy are surprisingly dynamic, vibrant and diverse, but personally, the price I'd have to pay for that would be too high for me. What do you guys think? Tell us on YouTube, Facebook and DW.com. That's all for today. Take care and see you next time.